speaking of eye patches in that profile picture and passing charts, you see Aaron Rodgers <laughs> where he just was throwing to the left side of the field. <laughs> he had the eye patch. Yeah, it's all to the right. Okay, let's let's we're we're good. Let's talk about the Jets. Let me, let me bring up another Aaron Rodgers thing that let's I talk, made me. Talk. It gave me an LOL, Tom. You you, you raffled. I lulled. Is Zach Wilson better than Aaron Rodgers? Oh boy, here we go. Let's start the debate right now. <laughs> so you it's think the same stat line, except Rodgers had a one fewer completions and more passing yards. And a lot of those passing yards came on a free play. So uh this is just so funny to me. <laughs> it's so funny. And they lost too. They and lost, they lost yeah. a good team. And it's this oh. weird thing for like Jets fans too, because it's like because Sala said this afterwards. He's like, "I'd rather be zero and one this year than one and zero last year," or <laughs> because they actually won the game last year. Yeah, and it's like this weird, like, okay, Rogers was healthy, he threw a touchdown, but we just kind of suck. Yeah. And like, there's a few things. First of all, their run defense, in which you saw no CMC, but Jordan Mason had himself a night. And I was yeah. talking about this all during predictions and all last week about that was the one weak point of that Jets defense last year was that run defense. They had no real pass rush. They are missing Hassan Reddick. If only they could, I don't know, work out a deal with a guy who has 11 sacks almost everywhere he goes. Sure. Right. That one. And then I will say the heartbreaking thing for me, because Rodgers could still sling it. Like you saw the velocity on the ball. My man can't move. <clears throat> he can't like, he's very, very stationary in the pocket now. And it's like, ugh, it yeah. wasn't. A... You, you saw that with Kirk cousins too. Yeah. It's like yeah. both of them had the same injury and both of them are older men who are struggling to find confidence on their Achilles. Yeah. And the, the jets got to be able to run the football. Um, Correct. They did they not run, run it well. well. And you mentioned pressure. I don't know if it finished this way, but it was very late in the game, and the Jets had only generated two pressures on yeah. Brock Purdy. Trent Williams, I know, finished the game without giving up a, a single pressure. And the Jets' defensive front is kind of what made them good defensively over the last couple of years. They don't – Franklin Myers is gone. They've got Reddick sitting on the bench. But their front office is deserving of any criticism. They – currently get both of the jersey front offices right now the jets and the giants mm -hmm. like you talk you, looking at like joe shane and all the guys gone contributing in other places right now for the giants it's, it's comical it's comical mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but anyway yeah. yeah like i guess if you're a jets fan you're you're happy rogers made it through the game you saw some flashes from him you think it's just about getting comfortable but it's they can't run the ball too effectively, and mm. their offensive line doesn't look great. Now Rogers is going to make them look, and Rogers is going to make that line look a little better by getting rid of the ball quickly, quickly. identifying yep. like he's going to know that as well as anyone. Uh, seeing him do the free play was nice, though. I'm not rooting against Rogers on the field because when when he deals, when he slings it, it's fun to watch, and that's my number one preference. So I hope they figure it out. I do. I just don't know if it's going to happen quickly for the Jets. <laughs> well, I think it's, again, the QB play is going to be better than what it was last year. Um, this is what I want to talk about as well, is because a lot of it's like talking about the failures or the inadequacies of the Jets. But the 49ers played like perfect football. Yeah, in which they played they, they, No CMC. There was a point, and it was like late in the third quarter, where – the time differential, I think it might be the early fourth quarter, that would make sense, where the time differential is like around 30 minutes to 15 minutes for time of possession. Like, they dominated the clock. They had long, sustained drives. They were like seven minutes long. They ran the ball really, really well. Yeah, I think I saw a, a thing about Jordan Mason causing the, the most forced missed tackles this week. It was like 13 or something. Um. So he played well. He played very good in place of an injured Christian McCaffrey, which is nice because now the, the 49ers don't have to rush McCaffrey back, right? Correct. And he's got he's got Achilles tendonitis or some shit. He's having a calf issue as well. And 
We talked about it last year with Joe Burrow. It felt like the Bengals rushed him back from his calf injury. He was never right. And it's the same thing with Russ. If Russ has a legit calf injury, you don't want to rush back from that because it's it sounds lame. It sounds like mm -hmm. insignificant, but uh, I, I think it's just one of those injuries that if you're dealing with, got to let it heal. And yeah. the 49ers now have the luxury of letting Christian McCaffrey get fully healthy because Mason played so well. And... They didn't get scared to get away from their game plan. He still had, did he have, it was like 28 touches, 28 rushes yeah, in that game? Yeah, he had game? a ton of carries, yeah. Yeah. Go look at all the dumb teams who lost who didn't fucking establish the run. Sure. With young quarterbacks or inexperienced quarterbacks. Like, but and stick again, to dude, it. The game, like you said, the game plan was flawless in which yeah. it was control the clock. Like Actually, you even, said that, but yes. And on to, well, no, you're talking about like they didn't get away from their game plan. But yeah. it was more of like Rodgers, they barely threw the ball. Like you have Aaron Rodgers, like, they, and you're not slinging it. So I think that's one. They couldn't establish the run. So the offense sure. didn't look good. And the defense just wasn't good. So the 49ers are like, okay, well, if you're not going to stop the run, yeah, here you go. Like, we're just going to keep up. Like, this is how we're going to beat you. And unless you adjust, the 49ers didn't have to adjust all night. They're just like, nope, we're just going to run the football. We're going to pass it when we want to. Brock Purdy made a couple of like throws that were whatever, but played flawless football. Like they looked like one, they looked like the Lions on that overtime drive, right? Just basically, there's the entire game. Just like, yeah. We're just going to march down the field. And the efficiency was just really, really cool to watch because it's like, damn, like, all right, they're just, they are the better football team tonight because the Jets have no answers for their ground game. Yeah. It's like, um, <laughs> San Francisco looks good. And you got to credit to like Kyle Shanahan for always sure. just having that team ready to play. And it's if they just stay healthy, they're going to be they're going to be very close to going back to the Super Bowl this season. Sure. That's like not an overreact. And the Lions offensive line, they're just they're going to be in a position to win a lot of games because of their line. Yep. And they're going to they're going to run the ball. Like they're going to do what they do well. True. 